speak, yeah, speak to my heart, God. It's kind of interesting is that we're getting to the end of this book, and uh, it was only meant to be a 30-day devotional, so I'm not quite sure what God has in store for what's next. <laughs> but I knew that I wanted to, in my mind when I was praying about this, to include K. Arthur in some form or format because of the volume of material that she has on the web I've always been trying to post that although it's been harder now and I haven't been able to do it as much as I'd like to but she always has a complete study that works perfectly for Bible study and is an excellent scholar when it comes to the Word of God and teaching the Word of God that I would highly recommend her for anyone you know and I know maybe men and women get kind of weird about all that stuff, but the point is is that she is God's chosen for teaching the Word of God, and she's very good at it. So I don't know what the Lord's going to do with the next devotional. You know, I'll have to go and pray before it happens and see what happens. But it'll be fun. I know that. Whatever God's got in store is good enough for me. And sometimes when she gets a little long-winded, I have to cut her short. <laughs> when you are offered a crown without the cross, who are you following? It's prime time for America and for Christianity. Prime time to take a good look at ourselves. At who we're following, at where we're going, and at what we value. When Primetime Live aired its investigative report on three tele... When Primetime Live aired its investigative report on three televangelists, I was sick as I am sure you were to see the program. When I saw how funds are solicited, how the responses of faithful listeners and supporters are handled, my heart was grieved. Madison Avenue techniques and manipulative schemes are being used to raise money for the quote unquote ministry of God. As I watched, I thought, Father, why do they give to ministries like this? Why are they hooked by the appeal? People often give because in some way, someone touched their heartstrings, which motivated their giving. Sometimes people give in order to get. They buy the premium and think they are in turn helping a good cause. Both the giver and the receiver benefit. Others give out of a sense of what I might term religious superstition. They think that if a certain person prays that God will hear, or if they give to a certain person, God will move in a certain way for them. Or they believe that if prayer is offered from a special place, the prayer is more effective. Tied in with this mindset is a twisted thinking that for some reason or another, a donation must accompany the prayer request. God will pay more attention if you put money behind it. So people send their prayer request to that certain person along with their donation. Some people think that if an empowered person lays his hand on the outline of their hand, whether they've written their request, that it will come to pass. And that all they got to do is use their prayer hanky and do a little perform a little magic and God will hear. Why do they think the person is empowered? Usually because the speaker claims some special anointing or because they've done something to supposedly demonstrate that power, such as a healing a person or reading a letter which affirms their power. Or a prophecy or a word of knowledge is given and a viewer or listener calls in and they got to confirm it. Therefore, it is assumed that the speaker has certain powers which put him a cut above the ordinary Christians. What's the problem with all this? The problem is that this person is elevated above the average believer and then in a sense takes on the role of a mediator. They act between God and the person. Oh, how this breaks my heart, for there is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2.5. When the Apostle John fell at the angel's feet, even the angel said, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19.10 It's prime time for Christians in America to quit putting people on pedestals. We are all fellow Christians, believers in particular, just parts of the body of Christ. Not one of us is sufficient alone. Not one of us can act alone nor is any part of the body to be exalted except the head. And Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. Ephesians 1.22 Let's love one another, but not exalt anyone. 
not musician, not pastor, not leader, not singer, not songwriter, not anyone except Jesus. After all, as I keep telling our people, any old bush will do to be set on fire with the fire of God. It's prime time for us to remember that. There were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, and the base things of the world, and the despised God has chosen the things that are not, so that he may nullify the things that are, so that no man may boast before God. But by his doing you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, so that, just as it is written, let him who boasts, boasts in the Lord, not of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 1, 26, 31. People also give because they like a person, they like a person's or a ministry's doctrinal stand. It sets well with them. It goes with what they believe or what they want to believe or what they hope is true. Some give because they have confidence in the ministry, trust the leadership, and feel called to God to have partnership in what the ministry is doing. Sometimes people give out of a sense of guilt or duty. It's prime time for Christians to examine why they give and if their giving is pleasing to God. The reality is, is that most of what people do has selfish motives. No one says, you know, I think I'll do this because I'm going to get beat up. Of course not. That's stupid. No one says, you know, I think I'm going to do this because I'm going to be persecuted. Of course not. That's narcissistic or masochistic. But in a lot of ways, there are people who give and do and act according to masochistic, narcissistic, and very personal rewarding, somehow getting back something from doing that God never intended for us to ever have a part of. And that's what the difference is, is that God wants you to be with Him doing as He directs you, not as you think you ought to do just by throwing your money around at some televangelist, some local congregation, some ministry, or some other thing. Because money is what keeps tripping up Christians, to put it bluntly. And while you may support a ministry, that's not tithing. That's just supporting a ministry. If you're going to pay for something, you get what you pay for. If you support your church, you support it. That's not tithing. If you support your pastor, that's supporting. That's not tithing. Tithing is the direct revelation of God giving unto him that which there would be meat in his house, that the poor would come and they would be fed and filled and they would be clothed and they would be helped and there would be a place for them in need. That they could cry out to God and God would send them to the house of the Lord where they could receive prayer and healing and sustenance and mercy. Not fleecing, giving, taking, and being told, be warm, be filled, and go. And locking the doors so the homeless cannot live. That is not what God intended tithing to be. The reality is, it's time for us, as those whom are called by God, chosen by God, and directed by God, to show what Jesus said when he said, if your brother has need, and you have two, what will you do? Will you give one? Will you open your house to the name of the Son? Or will you turn your back and just say, am I my brother's keeper? The reality is, is that those who pay for and have given to ministries, nine times out of ten, have already received their reward. And God owes them nothing.